Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Yuton. Today, I'm going to talk about a person who was meritorious and important to make the first empire in Chinese history, Shangyang. Shangyang was a courtier of Qin State during the Warring States period. Recalling the Warring States period I talked about in previous video, the nominal ruler at this time was king of Zhou Dynasty. In fact, each feudal state managed their states independently and launched a lot of war to expand their territory. There were seven major powers check and balance each other, and each one wanted to unify the world. At that time, the other six powers had already formed. However, Qing State was remote and regarded as barbarians by other states. They alienated Qing State and not allowed Qing State to participate in international conferences. Duke Xiao just succeeded the throne and became the leader of Qing State. He determined to change the status and strengthen Qing State, so he issued the decree of seeking talent. Song Yang loved to study jurisprudence since he was a child, and he was not valued in other states, so he came to Qing State because of the decree of seeking talent. Through a eunuch close to Duke Xiao, Song Yang had several interviews with Duke Xiao. In the first two interviews, Sang Yang taught Duke Xiao how to govern the states with justice and mercy, but Duke Xiao was not interested at all. In the follow-up interviews, Sang Yang talked about the use of force and power to govern the state, that is, to manage the people with severe punishment and laws. Compared with the former, it could be effective to strengthen the state. This speaking moved Duke Xiao and decided to appoint Sang Yang as an official. Sang Yang wanted to formulate new law to reform Qing State. Therefore, Duke Xiao held a court meeting and to debate for this matter. In my view, both sides of the debate are reasonable and the contents are wonderful. Let's listen to the argument from the opponent first. Sage does not change folk custom to educate the people and the wise does not change the established laws to govern the country. Follow the four customs to educate the people, you can success with less effort. Follow the old system to govern the country, officials are used to it, and the people are stable. Then here is the argument of Shang Yang. Sage does not need to follow the convention as long as he can make a country strong. He does not need to follow the old etiquette system as long as he can benefit the people. Wise people make laws, stupid people are restricted by laws. Wise people change etiquette, ordinary people are restrained by etiquette. Duke Xiao supported Sang Yang's argument very much and decided to start a reform. The laws of that time were not strictly followed by both the people and officials, because the officials dealt with all the matters according to their preference and interests. Sang Yang must first establish his own credit and let people believe that rewards and punishment system was fair and transparent before he issued a new law and started to reform. One day, Sang Yang placed a wood beside the south gate of the palace and announced to the people that if anyone moved the wood to the north gate, he would be rewarded with 10 gold ingates. People saw it unbelievable. Maybe it was just an official entertaining the people, so no one was willing to do it. Let's be regarded as a fool. Shang Yang saw that no one wanted to do it, so he increased the bonus to 50 gold ingates. Finally, a guy who was not afraid of Shen wanted to try it out. He moved the wood to the north gate. As a result, Shang Yang immediately gave him 50 gold ingates in public. Other people were surprised and regretful, and this matter quickly spread throughout the Qin state, making Shang Yang famous and trusty. I divided the content of Shang Yang's reform into four categories roughly. The first one was for nobles, abolish the hereditary system of nobility, severely punish nobles who privately gather people in their fiefdoms to fight for property or land, redistribute land. Because nobles had too much land and most of them were uncultivated, while the people had no land to cultivate, increase the taxes on nobles 
and reduce the number of servants hired by nobles, forcing them to work. The second part was for the common people: pay attention on agriculture, inhibit business, prohibit people from buying and selling rice and grain, nationalize natural resources such as mountains, lakes, and forests to prevent people from making money from land. Reduce the opportunity for people to read and get access to knowledge. The purpose was to make people concentrate on farming and increase production. In addition, population inventory and household registration were carried out. Adult men couldn't live together. That is, they should not be raised by others. They should work independently. The third part was about general regulations. The new law organized ten families into one unit and implemented collective punishment. One family committed a crime. Ten families were punished together. The purpose was to let everyone supervise each other. Whistleblowers would not be punished and would be rewarded. Conversely, those who hide criminals would be sentenced to death. People couldn't move house without permission. If a person went out to live in a hotel, he must have a certification from the government. Otherwise, both the traveler and hotel owner would be guilty. The feature of the new law was heavy penalties for minor crimes. The fourth part was about military. The new law attached great importance to military merit. During a war, whoever could get head of the enemy. Could get the title of peerage. Peerage was divided into twenty ranks. The more heads of enemy you get in a war, the higher rank of peerage you could be. Even the person with the lowest rank of peerage could get fields, houses, and some privileges. In addition. Only those with title of peerage could become officials, but those who surrender or escape in a war would be definitely punished severely. The rewards and punishments were also a collective system. Soldiers in the same team and even the officers were punished and rewarded together. The above was the main content of the new law at the beginning of the reform. Due to the reduction of the rights of nobles, many nobles strongly opposed it and even took the lead in breaking the new law. One day, the crown prince broke the law. Sun Yang wanted to use this as a demonstration and warning for nobles, so he severely punished the crown prince's teachers. After all, crown prince was the next leader of Qin State, and he couldn't be disabled. It's not that Sun Yang was afraid of him. One teacher had his nose cut off, and the other teacher had a tattoo on his face, meaning an eternal humiliation. Both of them were relatives of Duke Xiao, which meant they were powerful people. After this incident, the reform became more and more smooth. With such a new law, Qin State gradually became stronger, with overproduction of food. The people were rich and stable. Almost no one in Qin State dared to break a law, causing an orderly society. All the soldiers fought hard and actively on the battlefields. Therefore, Qin State won in many wars. Other states started to fear and respect Qin State and were willing to have political marriage with Qin State. Qin State became one of the seven main powers of the Warring States period. About 130 years later, Qin State unified China and became the first empire in Chinese history. The reform done by Sheng Yang was definitely the most important foundation for Qin State to unify the world. Unfortunately, Sheng Yang had a bad ending. The reform offended too many nobles, especially the two teachers of the Crown Prince. After the death of Duke Xiao, who supported Sheng Yang very much. The crown prince succeeded the throne, and the nobles took the opportunity to take revenge. They accused Sang Yang of mutiny. In order to appease the nobles, Sang Yang was given a cause split sentence. That is to use five horses to pull the head and limbs of a person apart. It is said that Sang Yang died of cause split. 
and Alice also say that Sun Yang died first, and then his body was caused split. Anyway, he had a terrible ending, but at least the new law promoted by Sun Yang was not abolished because of this, which made Qin stay successful. Alright, it's the end of Sun Yang's story. Hope you guys like Sun Yang, and if you have any opinions, please leave a comment. See you next time.